let's take half a step back. Uh, we'll talk about Shenzhen and what's happening there, what that might be doing to, to, to freight costs. But, I mean, things are already quite expensive right now as far as transporting goods globally is concerned. Can you tell us why? So, if, if you look at the freight rate, yes, they are three to five folds higher than a pre-pandemic level. But you have to see it okay. into the context that the shipping freight rate has been in deflationary for pretty much 12 to 13 years. So, yes, the freight rate has gone up. But when we look at the difference between the spot and contract rate, contract rates certainly are still at a reasonable level given, given the overall impact of that into the final finished goods. So we're normalizing the short of it. They, no, they are still at an elevated level. And our view is that, yes, they will normalize, but the new normal will still be reasonably higher than what we have seen in the past decade. Hmm. Uh, Paris, Tom here in Beijing. I, I just want to get your views then in what is happening with this port. And of course, David outlined uh, the, the fact that you do have uh, a case there that was being reported in terms of COVID-19 at this port uh, down in the, the southern part of uh, uh, Guangzhou, of course, near the, China, near the Hong Kong border. Uh, to what extent then could that snarl up uh, freight from that important port going forward? Yeah, so this is big. I mean, Yantian in the, in the context of China and US trade is pretty significant with 25% of U.S. import from China originates out of Yantian. And as I said in our research report, in isolation, these kind of events can not make so much noise in the past. But this time around, this is happening on the back of Suez Canal episode. This is happening on the back of extremely high demand. And therefore, the existing demand and supply is so tight that a small disruption in any part of the value chain will make things even more difficult. And that is what we are seeing in case of Yantian. What are we talking about in terms of capacity then, uh, container ship capacity, and whether we're getting closer to some of that additional capacity being added? Yeah. So what is important to understand is that uh, containers, container shipping is only a part of an overall supply chain. And what we are seeing is a disruption across the value chain. And as they say, you are as strong as your weakest link. So it's not only about the shortage of right type of ships or right type of equipment, but we have seen a congestion at the port. We have seen a delay in the crew changes because of different restrictions. We have, in fact, seen the congestion with respect to the lack of truck drivers. And if you put all this together, this is where we end up. And just to understand a little bit more, Parash, on what those supply constraints are, would you say they're mostly, if not all, short-term in nature, or is the industry underinvested also and we're just starting to also feel that right now it's it's a combination i mean what we are seeing now is a congestion which is coincide with an unprecedented level of import particularly from the us and this is not only a consumption driven but if you look at the retail sales to inventory it is at a record low as well and on the top of it we are seeing that the congestion i mean the underinvestment over the last 12 to 13 years has pretty much coincided with uh, a super normal or a above trend demand. I mean, to put into context, over the last 12 to 13 years, the ship ordering has come down from as high of 60% to as low as 8% at the end of last year. And now we are gradually, gradually coming back in terms of the ordering. But there has been underinvestment also at the port side. And this is, this is probably a result of, uh, result of those underinvestments. Okay, uh, we have trade numbers coming out today, Parash. The reason I bring that up is we're, you know, the market's trying to figure out with commodity prices on the way up, freight costs, as we just outlined the last couple of minutes, on the way up. Who gets to keep that profit and who gets the hit as far as costs and, and inflation is concerned? From your perspective and your research, who gets to keep the most, most of that profit? See, what we have seen so far is in, in the transport space, we have seen that container shipping lines were able to pass through uh, pass through the higher freight rate pretty comfortably to the to their customers, uh, which could be the large retailers or the large importers. We have seen the lessors or the ship owners were able to reflect the higher prices when they are entering into a contract with the shipping line. At, at this point of time, with the with rather an elevated saving, we have not seen uh, much impact uh, with respect to the final goods, either the prices being fully reflected or limiting consumers' ability to purchase. 
So, so far, probably the industry is absorbing rather the part of the cost increase and have not seen a material changes in the end demand. 